How'd you like to reduce your chance of being hit by a car on your bike by 50% at least? Hi, I'm Jim Dodson, the Florida Bike Guy. Today, we're gonna to talk about visibility. Um, and I'm a big proponent of high visibility on the bike. Um, one of the things that um, we're gonna go over is there's this, um, the reminder to all of us, I think that drivers are not looking for us. Uh, you know, drivers are looking for things that are a danger to them. The problem with for cyclists, that means that we have to separate ourselves from the clutter of background that the driver's looking at and looking through. And bear in mind, they're always looking for an approaching vehicle. They're never looking for an approaching cyclist. Um, one of the statistics I found recently is that cyclists, we believe that we're more visible than we are. But the shocking thing is that we believe that by about 700%. So cyclists are grossly overestimating our ability to be seen by an approaching driver. We think we're there, we're highly visible, we're moving and they see us, but the fact is they're not. Because in our practice every day, I talked to someone and the first thing the driver said after a crash was, I never saw them. Uh, and they might not have ever seen them because they're not quite looking for us. Um, so what we need to do is to create contrast between ourselves and the surrounding background. And how do we do that? We do that with high visibility clothing. There's a study that was done in Denmark and you know that they have a high proportion of cyclists over there. It's a great place to study cycling and driver behavior. Uh, this was really one of the most eye-opening studies I've seen. It came out last year. And it was that they did a test for a year with uh, thousands of cyclists wearing high visibility fluorescent um, jackets and something like this. So this is a kind of a winter jacket we might wear here. Uh, high visibility uh, fluorescent yellow. And they found that when cyclists wore high visibility fluorescent color jackets, they reduce their chances of having any collision by 50%. And that would be collisions against uh, pedestrians, against other cyclists and against motorists. And that's a, that's a really staggering figure, 50%. And the interesting thing about that study is it was all upper body. Um, we're gonna talk about some things that will even in my view, increase the odds of being seen by take, taking some enhancements to places other than our Jersey. I'm wearing the, I uh, can't get the camera up here. This, this is the uh, Jim Dodson Law Jersey. We give this away every time we do a speaking engagement, we give them away every time we have a public event. If you're ever at an event where we're set up, come over and register and we give at least one of these away every time we get together. Um, so bear in mind, so why is this visibility issue so important? Um, one of the most kind of prominent crash features that we see in our practice every day. That's the left hook, the right hook, and the kind of just the general failure to yield the right of way. And why is that? So remember that a driver is approaching, they say, they say they're coming the opposite direction that you're coming. You're cruising along in the bike lane, the driver's coming in the opposite direction. There's a shopping plaza on your right. They want to turn left to go into that plaza. They're scanning for cars coming in the lane ahead, which would be not the lane you're in, but the lane next to you. And they make a split second decision frequently to execute that left turn. You need to stand out. If you're cruising along in a dark kit, you've got a dark shirt, you've got dark uh, pants on, um, it's daylight. You may think you stand out, but you don't. So the, the driver is looking ahead. He's making a split second decision. They execute the left turn and oops, my God, there's a cyclist there. Same thing happens when they're turning right or generally trying to uh, change lanes coming out from an intersection. You know, what's the thing that we see all the time? I just talked to someone yesterday. They're in the uh, bike lane going in a certain direction. Cars coming from a stop sign perpendicular to them. Where's the car looking? They're looking in the lane of the direction of travel closest to them, which is the opposite side from where the cyclist is coming. They're looking, 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 and they go without looking back to see if someone's coming from the opposite direction. So my point is that we need to take steps in my view to increase the odds of standing out, creating contrast, 
uh, standing out against the background to increase the likelihood that in that split second decision, a driver is going to see you before they act, before they move. Um, remember that 50% of crashes occur involving cyclists on a straight road. That's really hard to believe. Um, straight road could be the one where the cyclist is going straight, but the car is turning, but it also is a situation where the car is coming from behind you and they still need to have high visibility in order to pick you out from the surroundings. There's this thing um, in engineering called reaction and perception time. Um, if we're operating a vehicle and you see something that you feel you need to take action, it takes a second and a half on average. Some people are slower, a few people are faster, but on average about a second and a half for someone to perceive something and engage the brain, engage the foot, engage the hand, turn the wheel, hit the brake. You have a second and a half and that vehicle's traveling at whatever speed they're going, 30 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour, you know, 50 feet a second, 60 feet a second. That's that second and a half, that vehicle may go 80 or 90 feet, even if they see you to react to you. And what happens when a vehicle and the operator of the vehicle is distracted? They're opening their cell phone, which takes four minutes, four seconds to open an iPhone, or they're checking directions on their, on their cell phone, or they're doing anything that takes their eyes off the road for another two seconds, another 100 feet that car may have traveled. So between them being distracted and them having reaction perception reaction time, that car could tra easily travel 100 or 150 feet. The point of all that is we need to stand out. We need to be seen. Uh, and I'm all about just increasing the likelihood that this vehicle is going to see you. So I've got some things that I that, that I use personally and when I ride that I think are operating to try to cut that advantage a little bit more in our favor. This is a, a Giro helmet. Um, it's got it's the most visibility that I could find. There are some I think that are solid neon uh, fluorescent. I think that's a great thing. These are arm warmers. I wear these year round. I've lived in Florida all my life. I don't need any more sun on my arms. Uh, these things really are high visibility. Uh, I wear them, they go from your wrist to your where your jersey meets and just increase the visibility, the surface factor of having that, um, that fluorescent yellow, in my view, uh, visible to the driver. Here's some long fingered gloves. I use short fingered every day of the year. These are for the winter. Uh, again, they've got visibility on the, on the hands. Um, you can get these in short gloves as well. And uh, these are socks. I always wear high visibility socks. Um, I don't have neon shoes yet, but uh, that's one thing that I need to get. Um, and we're gonna talk about why that's important. We have, I've got a variety of jackets. I've got uh, rain jackets, you know, for the summer carry this with you or a warmer jacket in the, in the winter. All of these are fluorescent yellow for a reason. Um, in the study of fluorescence, you know, they are seeing about 200% more and they're seeing from two or three times greater distance by drivers. Um, and there really isn't a difference from what I've been told between yellow or orange or um, some of the other greens that, that will equally stand out. So um, these, most of these are pearl Izumi. As a matter of fact, all of the, the arm warmer, the socks, the gloves, they're all pearl Izumi. Uh, I'm sure there are other brands out there. These are things that when I visit a bike shop, if I find something I like, I buy it. Um, just because you never know, it's not that easy to find this stuff. Uh, I think that we need to really create more demand for it and then people will be uh, stocking it in their bike shops more readily. So I, ho I hope you're enjoying what I'm saying. And, and I bring this message to you because as a, as a cyclist myself and as a safety advocate, I'm always wanting to raise the bar in terms of what we can do proactively to help ourselves uh, to minimize the chance of being hit. You know, being hit is, it's just not good. It, uh, get you off the bike. It, it's just a horrible experience to go through from, for a variety of reasons. Um, I tell you, one of the 
most frequent questions that I had this come up yesterday, I thought I'd just bring it up to you. Um, we have a number of calls from people who have their bike get destroyed for a variety of reasons. Um, if you have your bike gets destroyed and it's a homeowner's claim against the person that did it, or you have a situation where you ride into a pole or you ride into a uh, parked car, how do you replace your frame? You know, there's no insurance on your homeowner's policy for that, typically. Um, how do you replace your flame? And I, I talk about Velo Insurance quite a bit, V-E-L-O-S-U-R-A-N-C-E. They're uh, located in Florida, but they have, uh, they, they insure bikes across the country. Dave Williams is down in South Florida and when he's not in Colorado, I think. But um, I don't get any consideration for, for talking about their product. I, I, they don't do anything to promote us. And I just believe that it's the only thing that I'm personally aware of that will give us the ability to replace our bike. If your bike gets destroyed, um, you pay a, the deductible that you set up on your when you get the insurance, $150, $200, $300 and they replace the bike. It's pretty simple. So if you wanna protect your site, your bike, especially those of you out there riding these expensive bikes, I mean, a lot of people who have 12, $14,000 bikes that get destroyed and they have no insurance on it because they simply didn't know. So I hope that's, that's helpful to you. If I can ever be of help to you following a crash, you have any question about cycling or insurance or, or coverage, you know, I'm only a phone call away. So just go to jimdotsonlaw.com or thefloridabikeguy.com and I'll be happy to talk to you. So um, let's talk about the issue of biomotion. Um, in looking at this topic, I found that the human eye and our brain are really designed to pick up motion in addition to seeing something that's static. And by that, I mean, we need to be seen as a human, as a person on a bicycle. So that there's a difference between recognizing something and reacting to it. We need, people need to recognize when they glance at us, when they make these split second decisions for driving the car, that we are a human on a bicycle because that's going to determine how they react. And we need to increase the likelihood they see us as a human on a bicycle and react properly by avoiding or stopping or whatever they need to do under the circumstances. So how do you do that? Well, one of the ways is you use these fluorescent colors I've talked about, and you put it on your body in places where it, the, the person recognizes that you are moving. And where are those places? They're your feet, your ankles, your lower leg, your knees. Um, because what happens is, um, hey, Harris, thank you very much. Harris is saying this video needs to be required viewing by every bike club. I appreciate the, uh, the comment. So um, when, you put, when you put fluorescent colors on your knees and on your lower legs, and then you're moving down the road, that creates a totally different perception for a driver than someone who's just statically wearing some neon on their, on their body somewhere. And bear in mind, um, you really need a lot of neon to be seen. The uh, standard that the federal government uses for highway workers is they have to have a like a 12 by 15 inch patch of neon on these warning vests that they wear in order to be recognized by cars. So it doesn't help to have a little bit of neon on. You want it all over your jersey, you want it all over your jacket, you want it everywhere you can get it to try to increase the odds that you'll be seeing. Hey, Kathy, thanks so much. Um, appreciate the heads up on how important you think this topic is. So when you, when you put those colors below the waist on your bike, you're going to increase the odds. And this, I don't even have a study to support this, but you're going to increase the odds that that bio motion is going to be perceived by the driver so that they recognize who and what you are. Um, there's another issue about lighting, and I, 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 need, I talk about this frequently, and we've done other programs on it. We all need to run with a daylight headlight. Um, there's a lot of controversy, I think, in misunderstanding by people. I've done a program on headlights before, a lot of misunderstanding about lumens. The issue with a headlight is that it needs to be concentrated, and it needs to be perceived at least uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of yards away from where you are. 
I'm always opting for the brightest optical light that I can get with the most concentrated beam. And during the day, you want your headlight to flash. Flashing light attracts the driver's attention more readily than a steady beam. You also want a rear facing tail light. I run with at least two when I ride. Um, and I'm gonna give you one other piece of advice about that. I think my biggest concern and maybe pet peeve about brake lights or tail lights, I see people that have a, a light on their bike or they're wearing a light on their helmet, but I'm standing close to them at an event and I can barely determine if it's even flashing. So that, that light's gotta be seen by a driver who's trying to make a split second decision about what you are and where you are, you need to have that at least 400, visible 400 yards behind you, okay? So you need a bright flashing taillight, at least one. Uh, um, and we're gonna offer a, a resource at the end of our talk today on some of the lights. We've tested some headlights and we've tested some taillights and I've done a program on it. You'll see it on our Facebook Live uh, page, but. I'm going to make this resource available to you <clears throat> at the end of our program. There's also, and you know, going along with the 50% issue about being seen, the, there's another study in Denmark that, that I have seen that says that using lights during the day increases that margin as well by 50%. I've seen prior studies that showed it at 20%, but I had a recent study that showed it was much higher at 50%. So, Strong daylight running light flashing, strong daylight tail light flashing. And one other step, um, there's new information on this whole issue of biomotion that if we put a tail light on our ankles, you know, facing the rear, that increases the likelihood of this biomotion, recognizing that's a brake light, what is that? You want something that's going to attract the driver's attention from all the background to you and say, oh my God, that's a person on a bike. Um, so you can put a tail light, and it's recommended by the resources that I was looking at. Put this tail light on your ankle, facing rear. Same thing, bright flashing. Um, I had a question recently. I wrote about this, and someone asked me, "Do I have a resource for it?" And unfortunately, I, I really don't. So I'm calling on everyone out there. If you have a resource for a rear-facing uh, tail light it will go on our ankles. The only way I know to do it is to take a tail light and kind of use the Velcro system to put it on, but there must be one out there that's uh, manufactured for that purpose. So I'd love for you to uh, let us know what it is and we'll put it on the air. We'll put it out through our system and let people know as, much, as quickly as we can. So I hope that um, this information has been helpful to you. My hope for everyone is that we enjoy our sport you know, I have a passion for representing cyclists, but I also have a passion for helping cyclists stay out of trouble before they ever need our help. Um, and go to our the bit.ly link that uh, Katie has on the screen there and get our report on um, tail lights and headlights, and we'll make that available for you if you just request it. Um, it's bit.ly increase your visibility. So, that's Jim Dodson, the Florida Bike Guy. Be safe out there. If I can ever help you, let me know. Have a good day.